The Ardner Engine That Could Not Swim, Part 2. Again, I'm not an expert. Please don't treat me as an expert or assume an, an expert. I don't pretend any expertise. It's just the simple experience that I've had with this engine. Now, I'll confess we haven't made a lot of progress. And I don't really have a valid excuse. The only half excuses that I have is that the weather's been very good of late and the trout are actually rising quite actively in our local river here. So I've been spending a lot of my time down there fly fishing. You'll have to bear with me. This is part two. There could well be a part three and a part four. We're at the stage now where we're ready to unscrew the crankcase nuts here and lift the block up. We'll have to lower the sump and um, undo the the end caps on the crank on the con rods before we get that done. So, in order to take off these nuts, as you can imagine, this is the this is the special gardener gardener spanner specifically designed for this job. As you can imagine, those nuts in there are really quite tight. So I've put together this rather brutal adapter here, which helps us with that job. It hooks on there like that, and we can now exert a lot of force. But <clears throat> I'm getting a bit long in the tooth for hauling like that, and I'm, I'm afraid of damaging my back. So I think we'll probably heat all these nuts up with the acetylene, get them red hot, and then apply some torque. Now, an interesting fact about this spanner is that as the nuts come up, the spanner can actually go on the nut from the bottom of the nut. Do you see that? If I get one of the nuts, as the nut comes up here, the spanner is such of such a size that it'll actually come up from the bottom onto the nut and help you to undo or more particularly, it'll help you to tighten the nut down whenever you're putting the block on. Uh, I've made some progress with the four corner nuts, here and here, and here and here, because they're, they're easy. Uh, I just put this together. It's only welded out a bit of scrap. I learned this trick from a customer in Italy, actually, a few years ago. So that goes on there like that. It was on there like that, and I can now exert really a very significant torque there. If I want to <clears throat> um, tighten instead of loosening, I can put it on. Ah, oh, here, this way. Yeah, you got it. Here we see the injector pump removed, um, and it looks pretty grim in there. A lot of space is exposed. We had a lot of bother getting the pump off and we bent that stud there, but we'll sort that out. That'll not be a problem. The important thing to note here is how grim the crankcase nuts are. You'll see they're surrounded by corrosion and they're fairly well seized in there. As I explained, we'll have to apply heat. Now we have a look at the injector pump itself. Um, it doesn't look too bad for the, from this side, but I wouldn't be very optimistic. We'll pop those end covers off, off shortly. Um, round this side here, you can see the return spring there. I'm not too sure I'd be able to trade that in uh, to get a new one. Um, but I may just try. If we take a look at the back of the injector pump now, again, you can see more evidence here where this engine has been obviously run with water and the lubricant and oil. The rack, as you can imagine, is completely seized. And um, I'm not too sure my wife's going to be very happy with me putting those covers in the dishwasher. I don't think life would be worth living after that. This is the injector from the drive shaft removed. Again, fairly grim. And bearing will certainly be going in the bin. Not too sure about the um, the gear. Um, we can blast those clean and see what will happen. That's it. Um, we'll go on to part three, maybe in, well, within a few months. <laughs> Thank you so much.